video I'm gonna take you through my threshold session if you follow me over on Instagram you know that I've had a little bit of a not so great training period after Copenhagen half marathon I traveled back to Oslo then to Washington DC to visit my brother and then back to San Diego and my body just like really struggled to recover and then I had a UTI so my body's not been at its optimal state but I know that it's just really important for me to be super transparent and honest on here about how I'm feeling and also just like show these lows and then show how I navigate a situation like this where my body's not responding so well. I've had definitely a lot of rest like when I was on antibiotics I rested. Now I've just eased slowly back into running. What I found that's really helpful is training on heart rate like I always do and I always talk about the importance of training on heart rate but it's especially important during periods like this when your body is not responding very well because what happens then is that my pace is just naturally going to be slower because my heart is not as it normally is yes and that's just gonna make sure that I'm not overtraining. For today I have a 40 minute workout it's gonna be a 10 minute warm-up 20 minutes of threshold work but the threshold is gonna be super low threshold so honestly it's probably gonna be more like my normal easy run pace because I'm just running slower now because my body isn't responding and then I'm gonna do a 10 minute cool down It feels pretty good. The trick is just to not look at the pace. The only thing I see is my heart rate screen. And then what I do is that I ease into the heart rate. So I started at like 150 and then now I think I'm at the 12th rep and now I'm closer to 160. The most important thing is just to not go over, which is complete opposite of what I used to think when I started off running. I thought going faster and harder was better, but you can only really go too hard. And when I say you can only really go too hard, that's give a proper training plan. If you don't have a proper training plan, then I can't really tell you if you're going too hard or too easy, but a proper training plan, plan that is progressing you, you gotta make sure that you're actually staying true to the intensity because it's gonna naturally increase your mileage. One fifty four heart rate. Pick it up a little bit, but I feel like I'm getting a flow. The thing with heart rate too is it lags. So you gotta prepare for the heart rate to catch up to you, which is why you gotta be extra cautious of that max heart rate. 
that's why I started at like 115. I know that as I'm increasing the pace, my heart rate is gonna tell me that it's lower, but it's really working harder. It's just lagging. See, that's the only negative thing with heart rate is that lagging factor. And then also it's important to look at heart rate in combination with RPE. It's a rate of perceived exertion, which is how you feel. Okay. Let's actually feel good. How many more? I don't know, let's see. 17. Also remember that heart rate is individual. So don't copy my heart rate targets. What you have to do is get a VO2 max test or a lactate test and calculate your own zones. Really focusing on activating my muscles, especially because it's been a while since they've had a little bit of speed. Pushing off. And as you see, I'm not tired now. Last one. So like I said, now my heart rate aim is gonna be 120. But because I just had higher heart rate, it does take a little bit of time for the heart, for the heart rate to drop. So what I always tell my athletes is to just go as slow as possible. Because same as when we picked up the speed for the tempo, the heart lags now as well. So it's gonna take some time before it gets down to 120. And I know this like 120 seems crazy. And I just wanna remind you that this is my heart rate target, not yours. So yours is really gonna depend on how much volume you're doing, your max heart rate, your specific zones, and like how your body is feeling. I run twice a day, six to seven days per week. So it's definitely a lot. And that's why I go as low as I do. And when possible, I try to run on softer surfaces like this. It's going slowly. <laughs> but I keep pushing this message. The body doesn't know pace, it knows effort. And heart rate is a direct measure of that effort. I think the takeaway from this video is, so this workout didn't really feel like a workout, which was exactly the point. Just to get the legs a little bit used to some tempo, just slowly getting my body back to normal and building a base for the 2025 season. So what I used to do before, which was wrong, was that I was always like pushing. So now when my body was like more tired, I'd be like, what's going on? What's wrong? Like I have to go faster to get my body back. And that mentality kept holding me back for four years. And that's, if you see my, my other YouTube videos, you know that I've had six bone stress injuries. And yeah, I went from a 305 marathon to a 246 marathon to six bone stress injuries. And that was just because I kept trying to push the mileage. And then I didn't have the knowledge that I have now about managing intensity. So one thing is to push the mileage when you're training in the correct intensity and you understand how that, how the different intensities is actually working your system and you're absorbing the workouts. But if you're not, that's when 
<laughs> you get injured. Oh my god! <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about my story, then check out my story, the series, where I talk about how I won my first marathon, ran a 246 marathon as my second marathon, and then dealt with my six bone stress injuries.